Hi everyone. When it comes to the double slit, we actually have a formula for the path difference. It's d sine theta. In this video, I'm going to explain where this formula comes from. To begin, let's have two points A and B. And let me add one more point P so that uh, we have an isosceles triangle. Now, if I move the point P further away, uh, maybe to here, let's say, then the isosceles triangle will look um, sharper, right? Thinner or sharper. Now, tell me, what happens to this angle when the point P is moved further away? It becomes smaller, right? Now, the other two angles uh, in this triangle, as the point P moves further away, these two angles are going to become larger. Now, what if we move this point P to an infinite distance away, far, far away? How would this diagram look like? Wouldn't it look like this? Because as we move P further away, this angle is, to be, is going to become smaller and smaller. And if point P is far enough, this angle is going to become practically zero. What does it mean for these two angles? They are going to become 90 degrees. Now, I can think of these two lengths here as the radii of a circle. So I can draw the circular arc that's subtended by this sector. And when the point P is further away, the circular arc will look more like um, this. So guess what happens when point P is infinitely far away? How would this circular arc look like? I think it's going to look like this. Do you agree? So this is what happens when you have a very, very thin isosceles triangle. This angle uh, becomes zero degrees, and these two angles becomes 90 degrees. So the two radii uh, become practically parallel to each other, and the circular arc becomes practically a straight line. So what has this got to do with the double slit? So here I have two slits, A and B. And so two light rays leave uh, the two slits, A and B, and they meet at the destination point P on the screen. If I draw a circle centered about P and with AP as a radius, I get a circular arc like this. It's going to cut the ray from slit B here. I'm, I'm going to call this point um, B prime. Since AP and B prime B are both radii of a circle, it means these two distances are, are the same. So the path difference, which is AP minus BP, will be equal to B. B prime, right? So basically, I'm saying B, B prime is the path difference. In practice, the slit separation is just a few, uh, maybe 0.1 of mm, whereas the screen is typically like uh, uh, maybe one meters away. So if we were to draw this thing to scale, it will look something like this. Points A, O, and B are actually very close together. so They'll, they'll look like just a point here. So the rays from slits A and B uh, leave the slits and travel to the destination point P on the screen. We are going to call this angle theta. Now, A, P, and B prime B are both radii of a circle, right? That means we have an isosceles triangle. If this is 0.1 mm and this is like a few meters, then point P actually should be drawn at a point very, very far away, right? Very far away. So actually, this angle is practically zero degrees. And these two angles here are practically 90 degrees. That means if we zoom in, onto this region here, what we'll see is actually this. This is the ray uh, leaving slit A, this is the ray leaving slit B. They are practically parallel to each other. And what about the circular arc? 
if point P is far enough, that circular arc actually becomes a straight line. I hope you can see that. Um, this rectangular looking thing here is actually an isosceles triangle that is very thin. Right? Just imagine this isosceles triangle when it's, when it's very, very thin. It'll look like this. Now remember, BB prime is the path difference. If you spot this right angled triangle here, you realize that the path difference is actually D sine theta because D is the hypotenuse of this right angled triangle and the path difference is the opposite side. That's why when it comes to the double slit, we stop calculating AP minus BP. Instead, we just have to calculate D sine theta. From the double slit to the very center, this is where theta is zero degrees. So when we move away to either side of theta is equal to zero degrees, we have an uh, increasing theta. Now we have a very neat formula to predict where we are going to find constructive or destructive interference. Whenever d sine theta is zero or lambda, two lambdas, three lambdas, and so on, we get constructive interference and bright fringes. When d sine theta is half a lambda, one and a half lambdas, uh, two and a half lambdas, three and a half lambdas, and so on, we get destructive interference and dark fringes. It's actually a lot neater than when we had to calculate AP minus BP. Don't you think so? All right, that's all. Ta-ta!